Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Saray, and in this video we are going to be doing a December budget uh, closeout sort of recap, as well as the setup for my 2023 budget book and the setup for my January 2023 budget. So first we'll start with the recap of December for 2023. Uh, this is my full budget setup and I have already gone ahead and updated all the numbers. So basically I'm just going to walk you through um, exactly how I ended the month. I feel like this was the very first month where I was truly intentional with my spending and as a result I feel like um, I did it pretty good overall. So. If you didn't see the December budget video, I'll go ahead and link it here so that you can see that full setup. It was my full budget overhaul. Um, and what I had done is I had listed obviously all of my expenses and all of my anticipated bills for the month on here. And I actually had broken them down into how much I was going to take out per category. Since then, I have actually erased that and just kind of put the total here. So for example, for groceries, the way that I had it broken down was um, 180 for the first couple of weeks of the month and then 120 for the next um, couple of weeks of the remainder of December. But I've since erased that and just put the total that I had allocated. And the reason for that is because I wanted to have enough room to put in how much actually uh, we had ended up spending, which I think is something that now that, I, now that I'm an expert in many budget books, but I always feel like that's something that's missing in many budget books. You, you don't just want to list out your expenses, but you also want to take a look at how you actually did so that you can see whether you actually overspent or didn't. So it's obviously laying it down is a great first step, but you also have to, you want to make sure that you know exactly how your month ended up. So that's exactly what I've did he what I've done here and not every single category has that for example all the bills that I know how much we were going to spend like or things that are fixed so for instance our HOA I don't need to do a comparison because this is the same amount I'm only including how much is actually different for those variable expenses so um, obviously all of the fixed bills, they are what they are. Um, one of the things that was different for us was the electric. I had anticipated $100, but in fact it was $180. Uh, for our gas, I was anticipating $100, but it was $87. So that's another benefit of doing this exercise so that next month I am setting up for a much more accurate number because it is unlikely that in January if we spent 180 in electric in December it is unlikely that in January this number is going to be a hundred dollars it's going to be closer to 180 so that's what I want to keep in mind for next month and this is why this is helpful the other thing that was different was uh gas I guess but only by two dollars I I guess pretty good on this one uh co-pays I had anticipated forty dollars but only spent 24 for groceries this was the biggest difference and this is what um in theory or I guess in you know it, it threw out the the budget the total numbers but I know the reason why this happened so I had budgeted $300 but ended up spending 428 and the reason for that is because the $300 I had budgeted for was thinking that we were not going to be at home for 10 days out of the month of December because we were planning on traveling but since we didn't end up traveling obviously we needed more food in the house so we did overspend by $128 on groceries but dining out, which was, it's something that has been a huge struggle, um, came under uh, by $7. So we ended up, on, only ended up spending 93 as opposed to 100 So that's, I'm calling this a huge win. Uh, and the fact that, you know, it wasn't that much far off. Like I wasn't hundreds of dollars off. Uh, for gym, usually this is a fixed amount, but because I was sick, uh, there was one day where I had signed up for a class thinking that I was going to be ready to go back um, and I wasn't ready and mostly because I wanted to get my vaccine beforehand. So I ended up uh, waiting too long to cancel. So they charged me $18, which is the fee if you don't cancel within a 12 hour window. So I overspent a little bit on that. So I'm still kicking myself over it, but we move on. Uh, hair and nails. Uh, I actually didn't spend 
any money other than my normal hair color for this one, which is $32 from Madison Reed. And I had allocated $120 for um, nails to get my nails done. I didn't spend any money in the month of December because I ended up doing my own nails at home. However, I still counted $120 as an expense because I'm moving that $120 towards January because I am uh, going to get my nails done in January. Actually, I did get my nails done in January. So there we go. Um, so I'm using that money from December um, for January and I knew that I was gonna need a little bit more money because I was gonna do my pedicure, which I hadn't done in a couple months, my pedicure and my manicure. So I knew that was gonna take me a little bit more than the $60 that I had allocated for January. So I just carried that over. So I just still counted it as an expense. And the other thing was this $32, which technically should be under like vacation, but I just counted here under household. This was the fan that we ended up buying in preparation for our trip but we never went on the trip, so that's 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 it. Um, my other bills is fine for planning. I had budgeted forty dollars. I never spent any money, and for miscellaneous, I came under. Um, I only spent fifty eight dollars as opposed to eighty dollars. So overall, uh, over, went over on the budget by one hundred and fifty five dollars. But the majority of that is because of the groceries budget. So I'm calling that a huge win. So let's take a look at the goals that I had set out for the month of December. So I'm using this Erin Condren dual tip marker to kind of highlight the stars. So the first goal that I had for the month of December was to establish an updated budgeting and cash system. So that was my full December overhaul. And I'm giving myself a full five stars on this. I feel like I did a really nice job establishing the system and more importantly, really sticking to it and following through. This is something that I had tried in the past, but I had struggled because I didn't have the right mindset around it. But now that I see it as it's a necessary inconvenience of inconvenient way it's a necessary inconvenient way of doing this task that it's the only way that I that I that I'm able to see some uh, real results some tangible results uh, given how I learn given how I operate just my the way my my mind uh, my mind works it definitely uh uh, kicks in and when I kind of call it for what it is so definitely this budgeting system is not obviously the most convenient thing but you know if we just kind of call it out for what it is and we accept it I think we'll we'll be more successful so that's where I am with that um, the second goal was to do weekly check-ins I didn't do necessarily weekly check-ins but I was basically updating my budget daily as well as I did by weekly check-ins so I'm still calling that a win so this is more like I might adjust this goal to like do regular budget check-ins and I felt that I did really well with that so five stars and then simplify bank accounts so one of my goals was to uh, close out a couple of additional bank accounts that I had that was just creating a little bit of confusion they weren't always getting the right transactions that I needed to keep in order to avoid the monthly fee and I was paying there was a couple months where I did pay a monthly fee when I probably shouldn't have if I had stayed on top of it so I was just you know I'm just gonna get rid of those and just kind of simplify it a little bit further so overall i did honestly i'm going to pat myself in the back because i feel like i did a really really nice job uh this month with all of um, my budgeting goals and my money management so yay Saray. Now it's time to move into my next setup, which is January and my Erin Condren Petite budget book. I have a couple of my sticker sheets. These two items are from my Etsy shop. This is the monthly bill tracker and the sinking funds tracker, which is something that I used all of last year, which I am, you know, pretty proud of because I, I, I love to see everything at a glance in this structure and I can just kind of check off as I go. So that works out well. Now, this book doesn't have a ton ton of like notes pages actually doesn't really have any notes pages at all so I am repurposing this section here in order to keep track of um, my bills and my sinking funds so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this sticker it's a sticker sheet and it's designed to fit these pages so I'm going to typically I would white out everything underneath but I'm not gonna do that 
Hmm. The good thing is that these stickers are removable, so if you do need to reposition anything, you can. But let me think about this. All right, so here's what I decided. I decided to just use a blank sticker sheet instead of whiting out the whole thing because I don't want to use up all, all of my whiteout. Is I'm just going to use a sticker sheet that I've just cut in half essentially just to kind of take some of the shadowing away a little bit more. And this one's going to be a little bit longer, so I will just need to trim it, trim it on the bottom, but that's fine. Perfect. And it still doesn't like take the whole thing, but it's better than like just using a bunch of white out, I think. That way it's not like bumpy or anything. So I'm just going to put this one over here. Perfect. And then I'll just trim, I'll just trim this part. All right, so now my build tracker is a little bit wrinkly because I was messing around with it a little bit too much, but that's okay. I'll still use it. I'm not gonna reprint another one because it works out just fine. All right, perfect. Yeah, there's no shadowing at all except for this like saving structure up here and I'll probably just do some sort of washi or something just to block it. But I think that will work. And you can still, you know, you can put any like blank piece of paper, just glue it, a blank piece of paper and just glue the thing on top. And it's perfect, totally repurposed. Almost totally repurposed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this um, mid-century circles washi. I'm thinking to kind of cover that savings tracker wording and just give it a little bit of color. Make sure it's all lined up. Perfect. I'm just going to go ahead and trim it again. So this, these two pages definitely feel a little bit thicker because obviously it has all these stickers, but that's okay. Nice little sturdy section of the planner. All right, here we go. I really love how that washi turned out at the top. It's perfect. Ooh, it's my, I think it's my favorite setup of these two pages that I've ever done. So this is awesome. So that's like the cover page, jumps right into my monthly bills, my sinking funds, and then we jump right into the first month, which, which will be the month of January. And as you can see, I already have the components of the monthly, the budget kit. So here's the new updated budget kit. This is for the 2023 um, Harmony colorful petite budget book from Erin Condren. I have reformatted all the sheets so now it has the squares up at the top. Uh, these are a little bit smaller to fit the um, the different headers and all of that. The little calendars have been resized and then the backpack um, uh, page which I've already used some of them. I've added a few more scripts for example so things that you'll find here are things like you know break down if you need to break something down like I did in the month of December like I needed to break down our vacation uh, expenses uh, to order to buy. No spend was there before but um, uh, it's there. 
uh, to buy cash envelopes. I added another one here and then received and shipped if you want to track your online purchases. And the beauty of this um, kit too is like a lot of the components you can use them not just in the budget planner but also in the in your regular planner. So in my January plan with me I actually used some of these in my monthly view to set up the month of January. So I was um, setting this up. I haven't fully finished setting it up because for example, I need to add my little grading stickers to this, which I might put up at the top. Let me get my little tweezers. Yeah, I'll put them up here at the top now. I'm setting this one up a little bit later than I would like um, because I kind of got a little a little bit of a later start, but I already have this stuff sort of pre-planned. So I've been sticking to my January budget even though it has it wasn't set up here. I pre-planned it on a separate sheet. So now I'm basically just making sure that I'm officially transferring it over. So I'm going to start with this side first um, and then I'll fill in the other side. So for our income, oh. I knew I forgot something. I knew I forgot something and it was my <laughs> to print some of my budget labels for this. But you know what, for this month, I think I'm just gonna write them in and then I'll print some out for the next month just cause I don't wanna delay, um, you know, setting this up any further. So that's what I'm gonna do. So our income will be the same. Uh, Steven. SB income. I'm going to, I didn't uh, count any extra income for Saray Bailey for last month, but I will be incorporating some of it. I think I can um, comfortably just estimate $500 um, extra, but we'll see. Um, and if not, I'm going to try to do my best to generate that much um, so that I can make the budget work. So it's going to be for the income. Then for expenses, it will be our mortgage. We are paying a little bit extra this month. So I'm going to pay 3000 our HOA, and that'll be three twenty-five. dollars um, then for utilities, cell phone. So the cell phone, I'm estimating 156, but it might be less because I think this number was higher because it's a, it was a, it's a new phone. I got it in October. I think that was my first bill or yeah, maybe that was my first bill since I got the new phone. So there was probably some additional fees there. So I don't anticipate that it'll be that much. Um, so, but I'm just gonna use the number from last month to budget this month. And if it's less, great. That means that it's money that I can save. So electric, the same thing. I had estimated 100 last time, but I'm gonna go up to 180 because that's how much we ended up spending. So I'd rather overestimate than under. Uh, for our gas, I went. I had estimated last month 100, but we only spent like under 90, so I'm just gonna go with 90. And then this is uh, for January. We don't have a water bill because it's every it's every quarter. So the first water bill for 2023 will be in February. Okay, for transportation, our car payment and 610. Our gas I think I'm good with $40 hopefully that works out um, let's see co-pays oh this one it's more and this one is 132 because I had a bill that came in December but I wasn't I hadn't budgeted for it so I um, the credit cards would be here so I moved it on for the January for the January budget so 
and then for credit cards uh, it will be the same amount as last month even though I have paid off some credit cards. I've paid off two of my credit cards so far, uh, but that means that it's the same amount, but that means that more of it is going to one card. So that's that number. Uh, then we go into sinking funds for savings, and that will be um, a total of, um, I kind of break this one down into two, so it's 510, and 500 for each pay period, so a total of 1010. For savings, that'll be just general, general savings. And then I use anything extra from that I can generate. That's what I use for savings because right now I don't have any any additional um, any additional discretionary income to go to savings because I'm focusing on paying off the credit cards. So that's where we are. So that's the thing about um, debt is that at some point it has to be paid. So, you know, I have to, I'm sacrificing now. So for groceries, I am doing a total of um, 220, it's 220 plus 220. I'm going up $440. And last month, which I think is, so this 440 I think is a healthy number because last month we ended up spending 428. So I think I'm comfortable with that. Uh, dining out, I'm definitely gonna up, up it a little bit because even though we came out under last month, it was a, a little bit of a struggle because um, I definitely felt the pinch. So I'm gonna, I added a little bit extra this month of by $40 just to give us a little bit more uh, wiggle room. Then for personal, I have life insurance. So that's a fixed amount. Uh, gym, I should not. I'm fully back at the gym now. I'm, I feel pretty good. So it'll be that fixed amount. Hair and nails. That would be um, 32, it would be 60, I, I allocated 60, and then 32 for my Madison Reed subscription, so that should be good. Um, clothing, now this is something, some of these I did not, I had not allocated money to last time because I was really focused on, you know, just kind of focusing on my debt, etc. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing um, my some like low priority sort of sinking funds for these, like clothing, makeup, etc. Because I will need um, to make to spend some money around that at some point. So I'm going to just kind of save up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna save up a little bit so that, you know, I don't have, like, I, I get into the habit and, and, and into the uh, the routine with that, so. And then for household, I'm gonna do 80. So I'll show you guys um, the, like, low priority sinking funds binder and all of that. So entertainment, we have Apple, um, that would be 25. The entertainment category. That would be 80. Uh, and then planning. Oh. If I could spell planning correctly. That's gonna be 40. And then for miscellaneous, we have gifts. That'll be 40. And then miscellaneous, it'll be 30. So this is this is a big a big one because last month I had budgeted 80 dollars, 
and I spent close to 58, close to 60. So I'm cutting that in half this month because I had to pull from somewhere because I didn't have enough to go around. So I needed to adjust some things and that's where I took it from. So let's see, that's gonna be, this, that'll be interesting. Okay, uh, and then for this one, I'm gonna, so this one right here will be student loans, but those are dormant right now. So we're gonna go with zero, but I still wanna account for it. All right, so I wrote down the numbers already, but I wanna double check. So for income, 5,000 plus 1,800 plus 500, I'm looking at 73. I'm looking at 7,300. And let's do the total expenses. So we have 3,000, 325, 156, 180, 90, 610, 40, 132, 514. It'll be nice to have that 514 back. <laughs> 1010 for sinking funds, 440 for groceries, 140 for dining out. 134, 169, 80, 92, 40, 80, 25, 80, 40, and 70. So, wait a minute, I'm off by $60. Let me figure out where that is. All right, so I figure out um, the difference. So I had it um, for clothing. I had only put 20 makeup. I had only put 20 and then I recalculated. So I have the right number. So the number I was expecting to see was 7307, which is only $7 difference. I'm not going to count. Um, I'm not going to count that. That's like not a big deal. I mean, I shouldn't say every dollar counts, but that is um, I'm not going to sweat over those $7 because I'm trying to keep the numbers, you know, like ATM currency friendly. That way I can just kind of keep them like, you know, pretty, a pretty close number. So that is my layout um, for my budget in terms of what I'm expecting uh, for this month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to this side to uh, fill in my goals. So the first goal is to uh, log all of my transactions. And so log all of my transactions. Then do my regular budget check-ins. And then the third goal is to list and sell some household item. I know that I can find some things around the house to get rid of and sell. So we have like a couple of chairs, um, a couple of bar stools that I could list for sale and see how that does. Um, okay, so then let's see for this month, I'm gonna use these little letterings to, hmm, do I wanna, oh yeah, I think up here will be perfect. So just jot down what my goal is. And then, for this month, I don't have a ton to write on this one this month. So, but I do want to just write down the, what I want to sell. So one of the things that I want to sell or at least, at least listed um, on Facebook Marketplace. So list bar stools. and list, we have a couple of yellow chairs. All right, perfect. So what I will do on this one is I will use the cash envelope script 
for this side and I'm going to highlight which ones is a cash envelope. So um, groceries is a cash envelope category, dining out of course, hair and nails, clothing, makeup, household. entertainment, planning, uh, gifts, and miscellaneous. So all of those are cash envelopes. So what I'm going to do here is just list the breakdown. Um, so instead of like breaking it down here for how much it is, I can break it down here. So let's see. So groceries, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a little, create a little box for this one. So groceries is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So groceries. Two twenty and then two twenty. Dining out seventy and seventy. Hair and nails. It will be just sixty because the other one is automatically deducted. Uh, clothing. It'll be 20 and 20. I'll make up. Twenty and twenty. And then household. Forty, forty, entertainment, it'll be forty and forty, planning. This one should be 20 and 20. And miscellaneous, I just think I did 30. Yep, I just did 30 all at once. Okay, cool. So this one over here will be to track my no spend, but I don't track no spend with like every single day going in here and checking it off. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, maybe just at the end of the month, I'll go ahead and just kind of go back and highlight um, the days that I did spend or the days that I didn't spend, etc. All right, I don't think I have anything else really um, on here for that I need to write down. So I'm gonna use some of these deco sheets. These are from this collection to decorate the spread a little bit. Here we 
too. Uh, all right, let's see. I'm gonna use one of the big month scripts to just put in the month here. Perfect. And I've already started um, tracking in my transactions because I'm a little bit, it's still early in January, but um, it's not as early as I would have liked to have had this prepped by. Um, but I already started tracking on the other pages. So I'm just writing in the, or putting in a sticker for the, using the mini month um, sticker sheet. So this is the, uh, the big months and then the little months uh, sticker sheet for my shop. And that's it. I will go ahead and add the sinking funds for this month just so that I can keep track of it here in this page. And then I also will set up my um, my monthly bills and my sinking funds on these pages as well. All right, everyone. So my budget book for 2023 and for January, it's all set up. So I have my monthly bills here. So I added all of my monthly bills and I also uh, filled in the boxes of all of the bills that have been paid so far for the month of January. And for that, I'm using the Erin Condren dual tip markers. And I, I might just do it the color of the month because these markers do match the gem tone colors. So that's probably what I'll do. And then I have my sinking funds for the whole year. I've gone ahead and used a gray pilot friction marker, not marker, highlighter to highlight the month that is due. So for example, like our um, taxes obviously are due in April. We have like our property taxes due in July and in December. So that highlighted, that shaded um, means the month that is due and the date of that month that is due. And that one is set up. I really love how these two pages turned out. And then here, the month of January is all set up with my goals, what I'm going to try to tackle this month finance finances wise, uh, cash envelopes breakdown, uh, and then all of our the income and expenses that are expected. And then over here, I have my sinking funds already. And then I also, I have already started tracking these transactions. So these I started tracking since December 29th, which is the first pay check that I counted towards the month of January. And then in these next pages, I'll continue to track all of our expenses. I also wanted to share with you my different binders for my high priority sinking fund savings, my low priority sinking fund savings, and then my cash envelope challenges. So this one right here is basically to track my any extra cash that's left over from the cash envelopes uh, system for the month. So this one right here I have currently 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. This is $25 from something that I sold on Facebook Marketplace. It was like a desk. Um, I don't have any extra for the cash envelope savings because I didn't have any extra since we went over on our on our grocery budget. Um, but I will um, include here that I have um, 20. So I'm gonna put the, the date of the budget closeout, which was on December 30th. I added $25 and then my balance is $25. And I will color in the little cash wallet I'm going with pink and this one has a little area that uh, you can include what is the what is it that you're saving for so this is actually um, a this is a printable version um, of the cash envelope savings challenge this is in my Etsy shop so you can have a printable version of this and I have a few here because I'm going to be adding some more but um, this one I'm going to save for I want a new hair tool uh, but I do I don't want to the the past me would probably just say okay I'll just order the hair tool or whatever but I do want to save for it I kind of want to work for that hair tool so I am going to save up hopefully that'll encourage me to you know really be more intentional with my cash envelope system and see how much I can save um, with that the new one that I've added um, has been this low priority sinking funds and these are things um, that are uh, things like entertainment 
and I do need to fill these out uh, planning. So these are the other um, criteria that I hadn't started last month that I basically assigned a zero dollar to last month. Uh, but one, for example, that is not in my budget, but I want to add is going to be like our Christmas fund. Um, hair and nails for any extra or anything else that I want to save. Dental, I want to add um, personal training. This is something that I totally forgot to include. I um, want to save up for my personal training sessions. And then clothing, makeup, uh, and medical as well. So these are the sort of like what I consider low priority um, sinking funds right now. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these in because I need to uh, know how much is the balance. So first I'll start with um, entertainment and I have a total of $40. And these don't necessarily have a total that's due, so I'm gonna do a dash there. There's really no date that is due, but the monthly ad is gonna be a total of $80, give or take. That's gonna be the target. Um, so on 12.30, I added $40, and my balance right now is $40. So that could change, of course, depending on budgeting, but that's how much I'm adding. And all of these systems, like these binders are from my Etsy shop. Uh, the next one is planning. Oh, I'm done with this one. I don't have a total, no due dates and monthly ad will be 40 and this will say help me for like whenever there's like any planner launches which there's probably going to be one a, a big one for um Erin Condren in just a couple of months so for the new life planner so I definitely want to be prepared for that so if you are a planner I definitely encourage you to have your little planning sinking funds so that you can budget for that. So there are, you know, major planning events that happen throughout the year, like um, there's a back to school, um, you know, uh, launches, the calendar year launches, all of those are great. So this one is household. And I may update this maybe to have to be more specific to low priority sinking funds. For now, I just wanna start um, logging it and just making sure that I account for everything and then maybe I'll transfer it over. So this will be uh, $80, not 40. So on 12.30, I added 40, so the balance would be 40. All right. Perfect. Uh, for gifts, forty, twelve, thirty will be twenty and twenty. Yep. Uh, Christmas, nothing so far. But I do need to, for next month, I definitely have to start to allocate something to this font because Christmas 2023 will be here before we know it. Um, hair and nails. Then I have dental. This one I also want to save for, um, I need to update my retainers. I haven't updated my retainers in forever and I know that I need, I'm going to have to spend some money on that because it's usually not in covered by insurance. So, and I might be, I might be switching some of these. Um, this one will have a total due, but I'll need to figure that out. I'll probably do that some other time. So I'll just leave that there. I'll probably update that for next month. Um, some of these will probably be moved to my high priority binder. 
and because like for example that personal training has that's I consider that high priority medical and dental be high priority for us even though right now I have it in the low priority but I think I think I should probably move those um, to high priority because I want to prioritize those over makeup for instance so um, I'll probably will move those around but it's fine for now and that's the thing with like your budget you'll you'll continue to make adjustments to it as you need to as you kind of find um, you know your rhythm so it's 40 so on 1230 I added 20 20 Uh, makeup. This one goes there. Uh, makeup. And then the total will be 40 for the month. And then 12, 30, I added 20, 20. And then the last one I have is medical. Um, and I don't, don't have anything now, so I will update that one for next month. Make sure to include that in the budget because that money has to come from somewhere. And then the last one is just the high priority sinking funds. This one is already updated because I did this before. As soon as I went to the, to the ATM to get the cash envelopes, I did that already, so I already had it all of the funds for all of these so these are pretty much all set yep perfect so they're all set so that is the system for my budgeting so thank you guys so much for joining me today. Let me know if you have any comments or questions down below. Uh, don't forget to expand the description section. And if you're new to my channel, I really appreciate if you consider subscribing. I post videos every single week. Thank you guys so much again for joining me today. And as always, friends, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.